Joining us now, Dr. Uwe Platzbecker. He is from University Hospital Dresden and a member of the faculty presenting at an education session today. Thanks for joining us. So first, tell us about um, the thrust, the area that you're interested in working in. I do primarily work in the field of mitosplastic syndromes, and which is a rather rare hematological disease, at least compared to the um, oncology um, uh, diseases like breast cancer or whatever, but it's a very, still in the community, it's an unrecognized disease because many of those patients present only with mild anemia, mild thrombocytopenia, uh, and some of them can very rapidly develop leukemia. So therefore, from a model perspective, it is uh, also very interesting because it's a kind of model of leukemogenesis to uh, acute le mild leukemia. Uh, Mildosplastic syndrome is actually also a disease of the elderly, so the majority of the patients are 17, 70 years old uh, and, and, and above, and therefore intensive treatment options for them are not apl applicable in the majority of patients. And my interest is actually more on the therapeutic uh, um, uh, issue, so there are, there's a paucity of um, registered tr uh, drugs for those patients so we don't we only have EPO for some of them uh, for some of them we have hypomethylating agents which is evolving class of drugs but uh, still the majority of patients um, uh, cannot receive the appropriate treatment so a lot of research needs to be done to explore several targets and to maybe finally come to a um, more personalized or individualized therapy what were the goals of the education session you were involved with? The goals were, in principle, to little focus uh, and to bring together all the information which is uh, popping up now uh, every week in different journals. So the complexity and the diversity of the disease has dramatically increased over um, the past decade. And I think clinicians are sometimes a little bit um, disturbed or uh, blurred by all of, all of those information um, uh, and cannot focus or cannot uh, categorize uh, um, the disease because there's a lot of heterogeneity. Um, so the first part of the educational session today was about prognostic scoring systems, uh, which in the past mainly uh, relied on simple um, uh, clinical uh, tools like HB, hemoglobin level, neutropenia, whatever. Um, then um, um, we had a, I think we had a um, a big movement uh, 10 years ago with the implementation of cytogenetic abnormalities. So this was the first, um, um, the first issue uh, at this time and now we discovered a lot of molecular abnormalities. Um, and some of them have a negative prognostic impact, some of them are indifferent or intermediate and some of them are even uh, have, have a good prognosis. So, the first part mainly focused on how to categorize, how to score a given patient. Second part, including also my part, was on treatment. And uh, the majority of patients now receive hypomethylating agents, which is considered an epigenetic therapy, uh, because uh, many of uh, those patients have um, silenced tumor suppressor genes by hypermethylation. So this, this class of drugs can revert this and can, let's say, re-express also tumor suppressor genes. But um, those drugs have also not completely understood uh, mode of action. And um, the second speaker focused on maybe uh, how to individualize a treatment to those patients and how to predict maybe also response. My part was uh, actually on the only potentially curative option for those patients, which is allogenic stem cell transplantation. But as you know, the, uh, or as I told you before, the majority of patients are above the age of 70, so they would not tolerate it. But up to 15% of the patients can undergo uh, allogenic stem cell transplantation. And I try to focus on the patient selection. So who are the patients who might benefit from the procedure? And I brought up several issues, uh, including comorbidity index, including, um, including also genetic uh, um, um, selection based on the carrier type of those patients, but also focused on the post-transplant management, which is very important because many, many patients still relapse or progress after transplantation irrespective of this uh, um, potentially curative procedure. So it's a complex network and uh, 
many, many uh, issues are un unsolved, but I think the educational try to mainly focus on the key issues of this diagnostic and therapy. As a professor of hematology, what's your take on the significance of data being presented at this, this year's ASH conference? I have to admit that uh, many, many um, um, discoveries have been presented with regards to diagnostics, so new, new sets of mutations uh, with a certain prognostic impact, but from a therapeutic standpoint, I'm a little bit disappointed uh, with, with regards to this meeting because I haven't seen, let's say, um, a bunch of clinical trials which potentially would change uh, the treatment paradigm in the future. So I think um, we are currently focusing our efforts mainly on the diagnostic part, also the pathophysiology, but at the same time we should not forget to maybe discover uh, some targets also for, for clinical studies because at, at the end of the day we need to treat patients and we need to help them. So I expect maybe in two or three years that based on the discovery of those uh, new molecular findings we might design or we might get some new drugs uh, for our patients. So I'm actually I'm, 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 I'm very thrilled by those by the pop-up of those new molecular changes but I'm a little bit disappointed about uh, the potential therapeutic implications. So I haven't seen a lot of new information on that. Dr. Platzbecker, thanks for stopping by and sharing your opinions with us. We appreciate it. Thanks Welcome. very much, sir.